you know? But God is good always, and we should always be in the mode of always, not just the thanksgiving, but I appreciate what he's done for me. That was, that was Samuel's cry about Saul. He said, Saul did not appreciate that God had made him king. He cried about it. Sometimes once we become believers and we start getting into the word, we forget all about the appreciation factor. And we should always appreciate what God has done for us. Regardless of where you are, you know, we're not about nickels, noses, and, and all other things. We're about, you know, understanding why God brought us to this time and this place. You know, because, you know, as a black man, we could have been born in slavery. Are y'all with me? We could have been born a long time ago when we had chains on us and whatever, but he kept us for this time. See, you ought to be very thankful of the time that you live in that God chose to bring you here at this specific time. Amen? And so those of you out there, you may not be from our culture, but guess what? He bought you too. All right? You could have been somewhere. You could have been dead, but he bought you. This morning, we're going to look at a particular lesson about who we are so that we might uh, further our steps in the Lord God. Look at somebody and say, you are a pioneer. You are a pioneer. No matter what people say, no matter what people think, you are a pioneer, okay? You're a pioneer with the Christ living inside of you. And so we want to go this morning to the book of Exodus. You guys don't mind. The book of Exodus real quick, all right? When you get there, I'll tell you what chapter because some of you is going to be a struggle, all right? <laughs> get there real quick. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. All right. You're in 14? Now hold your finger there and flip back to 13. Because we want to look at really this life that God has given to us in a way to always be very thankful, but always be excited about what's happening with us. All right? What's happening with us? In uh, Exodus chapter 13, beginning in verse 21, all right? It says that the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way. Please underline that, to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire, all right, to give them light, to go by day and night. See, God leads you all the time, all right? And when we're working with him, we should know that there's never a time that he leaves us nor forsakes us, all right? All right, and it goes on saying he took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, all right? So that means that you can trust him, all right? You can trust him to do what he's going to do. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people, all right? And who are these people? They were his people, all right? Now we go to chapter 14. Come with me. 14, verse 20. And it came to pass, and it came between the camp of the Egyptians. Now he's talking about the pillar of fire and the pillar of, you know, the cloud. All of us together with God. Can't segment him. He's not a buffet. All right? It came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. So we see that God stood between. All right? Two particular two particular camps, okay? It says he came between the camp of Israel, uh, the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all night long. In other words, Egypt was searching for Israel, but because God stood between them, all night long, Israel is moving around and Egypt can't find them <laughs> because God took the, took the night and turned it or took the darkness and turned it into light with his presence. But behind him, he made it more dark. <laughs> well, Y'all got to get this one now, all right? Because this is all about your future. This is about your heart. This is about the intent, the motives and the things. Why you do what you do. Why you get up and go to church. Why you say what you say. It's showing us that the Lord God put darkness on the Egyptians 
to the point that even though they may have heard Israel, they couldn't find Israel. All right? Even though they could hear those millions of people moving at night in the light, but they were in the darkness and it was so dark that they couldn't find anybody. All right? Now this is the, the, the principle that you and I are following today that the world is trying to get the church to yield to. On the backside of that cloud, it represented the past life of Israel. They were in the camp of Egypt and God is putting darkness between the people that are moving forward to their life and the old life that they used to live. He's putting a blinder between the old camp He's putting a blinder between the old camp that we used to belong to. And now he's leading us to the camp that we're going to, the land of milk and honey. Can I get an amen in here this morning? All right? I don't need 10,000 people to say amen. All I need is one. Because when it's one and another one, we make the majority and the devil's got to go. So, so the whole thing is God is showing us that guess what? He places between us, all right, a power that our old life can't come over, can't come through, can't come under, can't come around to get to us if we walk in the light. If we walk in the light, he's placed it to the point that you and I can have his light to get us to the place where he desires for us to be. But the world, somebody said the world. Somebody said the devil. Uh huh. Somebody say the accuser of the brethren. Yeah, he's trying to accuse you all the time because you're going forward in the light. He don't want you to go in the light. He wants you to come back to Egypt. See, the world is trying to get the church to turn around and to come back to Egypt. So the question today is, and everybody can think about this, what side of the cloud are you on? What side of the cloud are you really on? When you're going forward, but you're looking backward and you're always talking about how it used to be. Let me tell you something. When, when, when I'm fishing, William ought to know this by now. He got a boat and he knows all. He done learned a whole lot of things in the last couple of years. When you're fishing, you don't need a map. You got to have a compass. Because a map only tells you where you've been. A compass tells you we're going somewhere that's uncharted. And this is the way I think about things and this is why when I come here and I look at stuff, I say, Lord, we're going somewhere we ain't never been before. We, we already know where you used to be, but now you got us on a course that we don't know where we're going, so we're gonna have to trust you because I ain't going back. I made up my mind a long time ago. Ain't nothing back there for me. But I would change everything that I know for everything that I don't know. Because the things that lie before us are the things that are unseen. And Paul tells us those are the things that we need to be searching for, not the things that have been behind us. And we got Christian people going back. Well, it used to be like this years ago. Well, it used, we got churches. We got pastors that are turning their back on God. Instead of standing up and saying, nope, I ain't going that way. I've been there. I've been to hell and come out. Why would I want to go back? Why would I want to smell the stench of all that stuff that always raised the skunk's attitude? I came in here the other morning. I told my wife, I said, open the gate up. A big old skunk ran across. And I was going like, boy, today is your blessed day. Because if I had anything in here smaller than what I have on my side, you would not make it across this parking lot. Now, I know all of you animal activists out there going, ah, oh, he would, I know he wouldn't shoot a skunk. That's like saying I wouldn't get rid of a devil. Yes, I would. Anything that hinders your atmosphere from breathing Jesus. Yeah. 
Anything that hinders your atmosphere from taking a deep breath of life and light, you don't need it. I don't care what it is, if it's in a pack, if it's in a bottle, if it's in the shape of a body, if it's hindering your breath with Jesus, you don't need it. You with me? Somebody say amen. amen. All right, see, I see some people, some people go like, oh, I don't know, Pastor. I know, and I can tell you right now, if you get under the deep breath of a skunk, you're going to be breathing, you're going to be searching for some clean air. And it is no different in the way the world is trying to carry us back into the skunk that we came out of. The darkness, the smell, the stench of death, all the stuff of poverty and lack. Why would you want to go back to that as a believer after Jesus bought you out, paid for you with his own blood, then took his body and set it down on the throne of God so that God would always have you on his mind? Why would I want to go back, put my trust in men? No matter what clout they have, what hat they wear, why would I want to do that when Jesus has sent me free? Are you guys with me this morning? Come on, go with me to the book of Isaiah real quick, chapter 5. In the book of Isaiah, you will find that there are 46 times that he talks about Zion, a place. But then you get into the Psalms and you find out that it's 47 times that Jesus says, I mean, that David talks about Zion being a people. So that's like, we live in Virginia, so we're called what? Virginians. <laughs> you guys with me? If I was in Texas, they would call me a Texan, okay? So if I'm in abundance, what would they call you, Rich? <laughs> Are you guys with me? So I'm in the kingdom, so what do they call me? A king and a priest. Are you guys with me? All right? And so this is what you and I ought to live every day. We came out of Egypt. All right? We're living now not by a map. We're living by a compass. And the compass is carrying us through waves that we've never been over before. There are, there are things under the bottom we've never seen before. There are things around us that we've never watched before. We've never paid any attention to these things because we've never been this way. See, And you got to know this when you're dealing with God in these days that, you know, everybody thinks the church is going to be this way and that way. I'm going to tell you right now, and I want you to get this down because you need to know this. How's the church going to look in these days? It's going to look just like Jesus. Because it's his church, and he's building it, and he don't fail. It's going to look just like Jesus. I know somebody going, well, it's going to look like this, where the church look like this. They ain't a part of the church. See, you're looking at something that ain't a part of the church. See, the church has always been those who have always been faithful to God. All right? As I told you, the stranger, the fruitless, and the outcast, he said, those are the people I'm going to build my church with. And so when you're looking at nickels and noses and names, <laughs> when you're looking at nickels and noses and names, you think that that's what the church is going to look like. No, it's not. Not according to the word of God. In Isaiah, you guys there by now? Isaiah chapter 5. Somebody said, turn me on. Turn me on. All right. I got your button now. All right. Look what he says in verse 20. Isaiah chapter 5. Woe to them that call evil good. <laughs> Woo. What, is, what is he saying? This, this was written 400 years before Jesus got here. What, what did he say? Woe to them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light. We're talking about the world now trying to get you to, to change things. That put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Does this sound like the day we're living in? Does it sound like, guess what, Egypt is trying to bring you back to Egypt 
and you've already come out headed to your promise, you're headed to your blessing. Somebody talk to me this morning. Sounds just like the world today. Trying to make everything that's good look evil. Everything that's, that's evil to look good. You know, you guys remember years ago, at least I remember my decade of coming up, that when somebody stayed with somebody, lived with somebody, a, a, a woman and a man lived together. We ain't talking about a man and a man and a woman and a woman, because that just, that, that just don't even make sense in the, in the natural. But we remember when, if a woman and a man stayed together, it was the most disgraceful thing. The most disgraceful thing. Not something that everybody would just say, oh, well, you know, they're just living together. No, that wouldn't even come up. It came up. That is the most disgusting thing in this world. What did they do? They began to change it. Oh, it's premarital living now. Premarital cohabitation. They got all, the world's got all kinds of names for it. And guess what? They're trying to get the church to accept it. Instead of you saying, no, that's sin. That's straight up and down. That's what God calls sin. Why, why do you call it sin? Because God called it sin. All right? Not, not because I call it sin. No, no. God called it sin. Somebody say sin. See, God called it sin. Not Chastain Rock. God called it sin. And you got preachers that, it's okay. You got congregations of people, it's okay. I got, I got one, of, one of the guys who was here years ago told somebody, you know, he left here and went to another church because of his family. And he went to a church where the first thing that he recognized was, guess what? The lady that was teaching Bible study was living with a guy. That's the first thing he recognized. But he stayed there. Why? Because you get insensitive to the power of God. You come against the power of God, and then everything in your life begins to melt away. So you can play with your life if you want to, but it's your life. See, and God is going to sit there and go like, okay, I separated you. I bought you out of darkness. I bought you into the light of my dear son. Now you're telling me that you don't appreciate what I did for you. So go on back and stay and, and, and regroup your own mind because one day you're going to wake up and you're going to be dead. That's just how serious it is, all right? And some people play with that. They open their mouth up and say and talk about everybody they can talk about, not realizing that Satan is the one that's using your tongue to talk about everybody, run, run everybody down. Even when you're complaining, it's Satan using your mouth. So, so again, I'm going to ask you again this morning, what side of the cloud are you on? Are you on the side that's pioneering, that's got the light of God and you're going forward? Or are you the one that's over here still walking around in darkness trying to figure out what you're going to do with your life? Because if you're in Christ, there is a compass. His name is the Holy Spirit. There is a compass. And the church is trying to push him out. See? So that we don't have no compass to carry us into that which is unknown. We're just going to stay like we used to be. When grandma cried on that tear-stained bench and saying, come by here, come by here. Nothing wrong with that. That was all grandma had. But that's not what you got. See, your clothing got changed. See, now you have a robe of righteousness. You can sing unto God. You are a priest unto God. You are called to be a king in your little world that you live in and provide the name of Jesus and the power of God right where you live. Well, my pastor said it's okay. Well, maybe pastor ain't living okay. Now, you can say what you want to say to me. I don't care because people lie on me all the time anyway. I got used to that a long time ago. But everything that people say, comes from Satan if it's an accuser. Everything, all right? Everything. And you gotta have an ear to know somebody's accusing somebody so that you will know where it's coming from, all right? Once you know where it's coming from, what do you do? You take it back to the truth. Just like Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Do I have some God lovers in the house this morning? You guys ready? Y'all want to take a trip with me? <laughs> Come on, go with me to the book of Ephesians. Woo-wee. 
Now, when we get into the book of Psalms, again, now you can read this, and this would be something that I would probably do doing Bible study or whatever, take a long time to do this. Isaiah talks about Zion 46 times. Psalms talks about Zion 47 times. Zion is a place. Zion is a people. When you put both of them together, you'll see that we are the people that bring the joy into the world. We are the people that praise Almighty God. We are the people that stand in this place of authority and execute God's word in the earth. We are the ones who cause the will of God to be done in places where the will of God has never been bought before. When you study out all of these particular scriptures in Isaiah and the book of Psalm, you will find out that that is who you are. You are a pioneer. You're the one that, guess what, steps on the step when it seems like it's just an egg and you use an egg to step to get you to another place in life. You're the one that don't care about the, about the nails in the ground because guess what, you know who owns the ground. You're the one, again, who don't care about how many seeds are in an apple, you just know that he gave the apple. You are the one that knows that the blood of Jesus stands for you. No matter what you've done, an enemy can't condemn you. All you gotta do is go get you a bloodbath. You are the one that trusts God every morning when you get up you go and seek God's face first before you seek anybody else's face and before you need anybody else's approval you go see what God has said about it see you're the one that's the pioneer and that's why they talk about you like they did Lewis and Clark many years ago them boys gonna die out there in that wilderness no they didn't die they paved the way for others they didn't die and you're not gonna die See, God's holding you. Somebody say, he's got me in his hands. <laughs> God's holding you. And the Bible tells me, guess what? Happy is a man who have the God of Jacob for his help. And God is definitely my help. So you go, you're never going to see me all walking around all sad looking and whatever. You're going to always see me get so smiling and always talking about this is what God's going to do. Yeah. You should be the same way, pioneer. Look at somebody and see, you better get your mule pack. <laughs> Because it's time for you to make some, make some steps. All right? So we go to the book of Ephesians real quick. Anybody in the house this morning? Y'all took away my clock so I can preach all day. My wife says right there. <laughs> Is she trying to tell me something? <laughs> Ephesians. <laughs> Woo. Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I love to read this book because it was like Paul came out of this particular setting of the flesh and was in the spirit writing this. It's almost like John the Baptist when he was, I mean with John, when he was on the island and all of a sudden he started writing all these things that gave you and I a record of what the Lord Jesus Christ expects from us, all right? What Jesus expects. It was no man that taught John those things. It was the Lord himself that told John, he says, write these things so that they might know. All right? Write these things so that they might understand this is the way I feel about it. Okay? Not, not the way the world is going to treat you, the way a church is going to do this or a denomination. And this is why, guess what? I guess, you know, when we came here, we, we named, well, before we came here, we named this, this particular place, Faith Christian Center World Outreach, non-denomination. People come here, are you a denomination? No, I'm not. Are you a I don't have anything against your denomination, but it don't mean that I want to eat peanut butter and jelly because you eat it. All right? It doesn't mean I go to the same restaurant that you go to because you like that one, it don't mean I'm gonna like that one. See, that's why there are so many different cultures because God wants the whole world to see how he can operate in anything, see? And so don't, don't knock me because I preach like this or I believe in faith and how we should live and you just believe in grace. Don't, don't knock me because of that. You have to grow in your own relationship with God because how you see him is how you're going to believe him. And I see him. as one that can bring resources out of unexpected places. See, I see him as one who can talk to a raven and give a raven an understanding of his voice. And the raven can go and get bread and flesh in the morning 
and then wait for the evening hour and still go get more bread. That means he got his mind on somebody's house. <laughs> then go get more bread and flesh and they'll still come and feed the man of God in the evening time and do it every day until God tells him not to do it. See, when you get to the point that you can take a bucket of water, seawater, and pour it around a camp and it'll be quail three feet high and a mile wide, then I'll listen to you. Until then, it's me and this Bible and the Holy Spirit. And this is what we have to understand. When we preach, when we talk the word, there should always be some encounter of the Holy Spirit coupled with your word. Somebody should get some wisdom. Somebody should have something settled. Somebody should have a clear way. Somebody should have this or that. Something should change about them. Not just I heard the word, oh, it's good, and, and nothing happened to you. That's not just what God does. He speaks to you, and boy, you, you go like, what? And you know some things, you know? That's why I pick on Larry sometimes, you know? Because Larry, he listened to what I said. See, he listened to me. This man, this young man, a blood disease that's just tearing his life up? Who, who needs that? Nobody. But, but the world wants you to go back to Egypt. Go back to where, you, you, you know, the world just feeds you the cucumbers. You know, you go back and get your cabbage every now and then. Go back to the world. That's the way the world is. But God's not like that. He's not like that. And, and people have been preaching him wrong. And you got to know. Man, he'll turn your world upside down and shake everything in it that's bad and then turn it back up and you'll find out that guess what? You got a God you can trust on. These people teaching this weak gospel, and this weak Jesus, you think it's weak to let somebody spit in your face and you stand there knowing that you created them? You think that's weak? To, to smack the man who made you you think that's weak for him to stand there and allow you to just, just do what you want to do to him and he don't say a word? You think that's weak? No, that ain't weak. You think it's weak to lay down and to go carry your cross and then, you know, and get there and then lay down on it? He didn't fight. He didn't struggle. He didn't say, anybody, please help me, whatever. He laid down and put his hands there. He says, put those nails in my hands. You think that's weak? <laughs> that ain't weak at all. And then to get up and say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. You think that's weak? Hmm? To allow men and women that he came for, his own enemies, and he's suffering for his own enemies. You think that's weak? And you hear you, you can't even stand for somebody to take your parking spot. Or you know, if somebody come in and in the grocery line and cut in in front of you. Or if somebody on the road driving in front of you and they're a little slow, and guess what? You got more patience with the person behind you than you got with the one in front of you. And you want them, get out of the road, get out of my way, get, get move, hurry up, I got, I got somewhere to go. Hmm. Where did I tell you guys to go, Ephesians? Yeah, we got there and then we got one more place to go. And I'm gonna let you guys take a break. Say hallelujah. <laughs> Ephesians. <laughs> Woo. Chapter 2. Please read chapter 1 when you get the chance. Chapter 2 starts off like this. And you, you need to put your name there. And you. All right, look around and tell somebody, you means you. <laughs> you means you, all right, put your name there. And you have he quickened made alive you're living on the inside now like you never knew you lived before if you could pull your flesh back oh if you could pull your flesh back and see yourself if you could just if you could just grab yourself all right and just open yourself up you'd see all that Chicano glory in there just shining 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 you would push it back because it would be so bright. Because it's the son of God living on the inside of you. John said when he saw him, he says, he had more strength than the sun in its full strength. He says, I fell down on my face before him like I was a dead man. 
Well, you've been born by the same spirit. This is why God the Father allowed Peter, James, and John to see Jesus the way he always sees Jesus. When he went up on the Mount of Transfiguration, it says he started shining from the inside and Daddy God allowed them to see him the way God always sees him, the way he always sees you. That's why you can't go around talking about how poor you are, how bad you are, what you're this, you're that. It's because God looks at you and he sees his son inside of you. You ain't some little light Let my little light shine. <laughs> somebody give somebody a high five. All right? Y'all get on, get on serious right now. <laughs> this little light of mine. That's because you don't know who you are. And the world is taking advantage of you because you don't know who you are. I'm going to ask you a question before I read this scripture here. If I would take a seed and I wanted a harvest, what do I have to do with the seed? This an auction. Okay, God, get one over here, get one over here. How about two, two? God, got two there. Three, three, three. I do what? I have to sow it. After I sow it, what do I have to do? I have to tend it. Okay, I can't just let it sit in the ground. I, just, I have to do some things, right? In order to you do what? To get a harvest, right? All right? What do I have to do to get an inheritance? What do I have to do to get an inheritance? No, I don't. No, what, what, what? Just be what? Be somebody. That's right. All you have to do to get an inheritance is be somebody. I'm going to let y'all think about that. <laughs> Whosoever believeth in me, you receive an inheritance. You didn't have to go so for it. You don't have to do all this stuff for it. All you have to do is be somebody and you have an inheritance. Well, see, we have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. See, based on his work, not yours based on what he did, not you, based on who he is and how he's made you now, you are the sons of Almighty God. You have already been set for an inheritance. You don't have to go out and do these things that these religious people call themselves doing, trying to sow a seed to make God think that they're so good that they're going to get some kind of harvest from God. We got organizations like that in the world that's trying to tell you that this is what you need to be successful. And you're already successful because guess what? You're somebody. <laughs> Hunt somebody say, I knew you look good. You look, you look like I knew you, I knew you were royalty when I saw you. Why? Because you're somebody. See, you're somebody. You don't have to do all that stuff that many of them are out there doing, trying to get God's approval. Because I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. No, 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 no. You're just doing all that for harvest. But with God, you have an inheritance. And I can tell you, an inheritance is a whole lot better than a harvest. <laughs> and especially when it's come from Jesus. Somebody say, I told you you were a pioneer. Now let's go to the book of Ephesians. <laughs> All right. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, we started here. And you have he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past, remember you in Egypt. Remember you were in Egypt. You were a slave and couldn't do nothing about it. Well, I can stop drinking if I want to. No, you can't. You can go to all the classes you want. All somebody do has got to get you around as a bottle, an attitude, an atmosphere, and guess what? All one ain't going to hurt you. And you right back drinking. All right? Smoking the same way. All those things. People have tried do this, do this, do this, and what do they do? They got to go do this. They got to do this. I have not seen people get off stuff except through the power of God. When they, when they, when they become a slave to that, they can't. They, they, they are not in control. There's a master over them that's using, their, using the faculties of their mind, telling them, oh, you got to eat like this. You got to eat like this. Or you got to smoke or you got to drink. You can go back to Isaiah where we were, Isaiah chapter 5, and you can go over to, I think it's verse 7 or 8 or whatever, and you can see where he says, woe to those who wake up in the morning, you got to have something to drink. You can go back, you can read it. Powerful book, the book of Isaiah. In fact, Jesus used that book a lot in his ministry. 
that book in the book of Psalms. He used it a lot. All right, and it says this. Now, let's finish this up because we got to go to another scripture, and then you guys can go home. Yeah. Here we go. He says this. Among whom also we had, we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Some, of, some, some Christian people are right back there today. How can you talk about somebody that you used to praise God with? You used to stand right there and praise the Lord with them. But now you run them down. What, what caused you to change your vocabulary? See? It, it had to be, it wasn't something in the natural. It had to be something supernatural See? to get you to change all of a sudden your, your mindset about that person. Oh, we praised the Lord for years. We ran up and down the floor, but now... You, you're a dog, and God's with me. God's with you? you better, which, which God's with you? The big God or the little G God? Which one's with you? You know? You, you got to watch how you do stuff like that. And people do it all the time, and they don't think that they've slipped right on back into Egypt. Like the ones in, do you read the book of Numbers? We want to go back because, guess what? We don't want, you, you, got, you carrying us somewhere we've never been before. All them giants, we never saw no giants in Egypt. All we saw was cucumbers. We had to deal with no giants in Egypt. All we saw was the cabbages. That was the biggest thing we had to deal with, cutting the cabbage up. Now you want us to go into where you're saying that we should go. Even though it's a promise from God, but you want us to go in there where we've never been before, and you're telling me that we can overcome? No, let's go back and let's cut up some more cabbages. That's what they said. That's what some people are saying today. And when you get to that pot of cabbages, buddy, let me tell you something. As God said, you trying to change sweet for bitter, bitter for sweet now, you're going to get bitter. He ain't playing either. He says this. Y'all with me? He says this. Oh, boy, let's finish this up. Pastor Rock. <laughs> in times past, in the lust of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, see, I appreciate what God did. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, Quicken us together with Christ. By grace, you've been saved. You didn't do nothing about it. It's just accept Jesus, what Jesus' work had done for you. Have raised us up together, the high calling of God. That's why you're a pioneer. Because, see, you think the world's trying to get you to go down, and every time you praise God, you're going up. The world's trying to get you to step aside, and every time, guess what? Every time you go do a service for God, guess what? You're taking one more step up higher and higher. You know, one day you're going to take so many steps, Jesus is going to be standing right there and say, oh, don't pass me by now. Don't pass me by. Be right here. <laughs> if quickened us together with Christ, raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And here's the catch, that in the world, the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ. For by grace, you were saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before have before ordained that we should walk in them. This is called the time before the time. When you were ordered by God, as David said in Psalms 139, when you were ordered by God, your days, your parts, everything about you was put together before your mama and your daddy even looked in their, their eyes. God had already knew your parts. He knew when you would be here. Now come on, go with me to 2 Corinthians, and we're going to let you guys go. Chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You guys are pioneers. Stop looking for the map of the past. 
how to get back to Egypt. Hmm? How to get back to the way it used to be. How to get back to, oh, we used to sing this, how to get back. Everybody want, want to get back. Stop looking at a map. How to get back and start holding on to John chapter 16 where Jesus says, when he come, the Holy Spirit, he's going to guide you into all truth. That's a compass. He's going to lead you. He's going to show you things that belong to me. That's a compass. See, stop, stop thinking about all the old stuff, how it used to be, and start thinking about, man, we're going to a place we ain't never been before. I'm ready to see some faces I ain't never seen before. You know, instead of all these faces y'all keep bringing up. You still holding on to a map. See, I ain't got no map of all of that anymore. My map is gone. You need to burn that map and get your compass. You can get that. I can, either I can lay hands on you or I can have Elder James Taylor lay hands on you. You can get the Holy Ghost today. That's all there is. You need a new compass so you can have the sight of Almighty God. When, when he comes, he will guide you. Get your eyes off of all that old stuff about, you know, well, well I just, I'm, just, I'm just looking back at the, like, like Solomon, all the things under the sun. No. Why don't you look at the things that are in the sun? Huh? In Christ Jesus. Not, not under the sun, but in the sun. See? You do that, yeah. you will have the camper. Second Corinthians chapter 4, you guys ready? I don't know if y'all ready for this one or not. Here we go. Verse 13. Wherever they're going, Lord God, we bind the spirit of death. We loose life. That people may have the opportunity to choose you. In Jesus' name. We have in the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. See, you can't keep a pioneer quiet. They hear some things that other people ain't never heard. When John was on the Isle of Patmos, he heard things that other people had never heard before. Hmm? When Peter stood at the lake with Jesus, guess what? They heard things that other people had never heard. Pioneers always hear things that other people never hear. Knowing that he, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall also shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Now this is talking about the church, all right? So you want to know what the church is going to look like? It's going to look like Jesus. All right? It's going to look like the remnant of people, the people who are, guess, guess what? As I've told you, those three types of people, that's what the church is going to look like. See? It ain't going to look like nickels and noses and, and names. I'm going to hold on to that one. You hold on to it for me. If I, all right? Nickels, noses, and names. It ain't going to be like that. It's going to be about the people that are outcasts, the stranger, and the fruitless. It's going to be about those people who appreciate God. He says, for all the things, for all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through thanksgiving of many rebound to, rebound to the glory of God, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, he's talking about the sense world, all right? Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He's talking about the spiritual world, all right? The spiritual you. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen. See, you got to get your eyes off of this natural world. This is what a pioneer in the spirit realm does. See, I got to get my eyes off of what I see going on out there. And I got to get my eyes on what's going on in him. That's why I said you got to stop looking at things under the sun and start looking at things in the sun. Are y'all with me? Because in Christ Jesus, there are many things. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. They're passing away. I can tell you they're passing away. It may not look like they're passing away, but this word right here says they're passing away. They're going to pass away. But the things which are not seen, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at things that are eternal. The word of Almighty God. When God gives a promise, let me tell you something, you're going to be healed. When God gives a promise, you're going to be raised up. When God gives a promise, guess what? It's going to happen to you, nor regardless of who's kicking against it or whatever, it's going to happen. And you're going to be just like Sarah. You're going to stand up 90 years old and had your child, and you're going to tell everybody, you're going to say, the Lord has made me laugh. Yeah. And they that hear... They're going to laugh with me. Praise God. Well, I got to stop right there.
because I'd keep on going because there's much to say. But for those of you out there, I'm going to ask the question again. What side of the cloud are you on? Are you on the side that wants to go back to the cucumbers, the cabbages, the onions? I don't know why anybody would want to run back to an onion, but or are you the one that want to step ahead, see the things that have been unseen before, sharing the things that nobody else has ever heard before? If you're that person. You're the pioneer. You're the person that's set for the high calling of God. You're the person of Zion, where God, El Elyon, is the one who establishes us. You're the one who will walk in power and authority, regardless of what everybody else is saying, what you say is what's going to matter. You're the one. And so we invite you, through the power of the Spirit of God and the Word of God, to submit yourself and your life to the ways of God. Let me tell you something. He's going to always reward you for your faithfulness. He doesn't say, you know, well, well done, my qualified. He doesn't say, oh, you were so qualified. He doesn't say that. You don't see that. He says, well done, my good and faithful servant. See, not qualified, but faithful. So let's remain faithful. Let's follow him with the mindset, the motives of a pioneer. And we want to see God's will done in the earth. Things that have never been done on the earth before coming through his men, women, boys, and girls that rest in Christ Jesus and are led by the greatest compass we could ever have, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Pastor Milton's coming. He's going he's to talk to you guys. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's a wonderful day to be alive. A wonderful time to hear God speaking to us. Praise the Lord. May the Lord God bless you real good. Come on, Pastor Milton. You guys give Pastor Milton a hand. Hallelujah. Ah. <laughs> well, you guys have just heard a, a powerful word from the Lord. And I'm telling you, keep moving forward by the, the compass of the Lord. As you heard Apostle speak of today. Um, be the person, be the church, be the, the son or the daughter of God that is moving forward on the right side of the cloud, you know, moving forward in the things that God has for us. So God bless all of you that have been watching us today through the live stream. As you've joined with those that are in this house today, we thank God for uh, your participation in what God is doing and what he's speaking to your heart today. You know, God always speaks to us at that place, on the inside. Many different things appeal to our senses, appeal to many other aspects of our lives, but God always speaks to our hearts. That's the root of, of everything with us. So allow that word that you've heard today to continue to resonate in your, in your ears. Uh, don't dismiss it, don't put it aside, but chew on it and allow it to chew on you, you know? The word will also work on you just while you are, are taking it in. So allow the Holy Spirit to continue to open your understanding and, and show you in different areas of your life where maybe you need to allow him to be the compass. Step on out there. You know, sometimes we don't like to step out where we don't know where the footing is or, or places, as you heard apostles say, that we haven't been before. But step out. Trust the Lord. And he will never fail. He will never uh, forsake you or leave you or leave you hanging as sometimes people will. So God bless you. We encourage you to continue to uh, tune in to uh, many different uh, sources of, of information, inspiration, and revelation that comes through this house. Check us out on uh, weekday mornings on Daily Bread with Apostle Rock. Uh, and, uh, and just allow your life to continue to be enriched by the word of God. If you don't have a church, um, whether you are close or whether you are far away, you can be a part of this ministry. Um, if you're far away, of course, through online membership, and membership always has its benefits, has its privileges. 
And if you're close, if you're living in the Fredericksburg community, well, guess what? Unless you are incapacitated, we expect you to be in the house, in the presence of the Lord, and, and be here with other believe, believers gathering yourselves together, as God said that we should. And so uh, God bless you. If you don't know Jesus as Lord of your life, I will tell you this today. I will highly recommend that you make Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. Don't allow any moment to pass. All we ever have is the now. And that now is the moment that we're taking our breath in right now. And so take advantage of the time that God has still given you on the earth. Because once this life is over on this side, we're going, when you step into eternity, and there is an eternity that all of us will step into, whether when Jesus parts the clouds or whether we close our eyes, there's a place that we are going to go into and our lives will never, ever be the same. So make this choice today while you still have the opportunity to make that choice. One day you won't. If you haven't made that choice on this side of life, that opportunity will be gone. And there are many that are in hell today that are saying, Lord, can I have another opportunity? Don't be like the rich man that said, Lord, or he, he begged and he pleaded, even that Abraham or that someone else would go by the way of his brother's house to share with them the gospel of Jesus Christ. But Jesus said unto them, or Abraham said through Jesus, by way of Jesus, you know, they have the law, they have the prophets, they have the word of God. You and I on this side of life, we have the word of God that is preached to us, that we hear day in and day out. Don't dismiss that word. It will change your life forever. And so many step into eternity not knowing Jesus, and even though they had many opportunities, don't be that person. Make this choice, make this decision today. And say, Jesus, I invite you to be Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that you died for me and that you rose for me. You are God's son, and I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. And if you pray that prayer, the life of God will come on the inside of you. His presence will fill your life, and God will come in and have fellowship with you. He's a very personal God. And so, if you prayed that prayer, if you invited the Lord Jesus in, let us know. We would love to share more of God's word with you. Uh, disciple you, be a part of the discipling process. You know, Jesus said to go into all the world to make disciples of men, women, boys, and girls. He wants you to grow in him and to have fellowship with him and understand the truths and the laws of his kingdom and how he operates. So that as you heard Apostle Rock say today, you can live on the right side of God's cloud. Amen. As we've come out of Egypt. So God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next time. On behalf of our apostles, Chastain and Ella Rock, I'm Pastor Milton. We are FCCWO Church. See you next time. Have a blessed week. Amen.